All right, well, we're going to go straight out to Jonathan Green and Kevin Schwantz for the call of the race, and we'll join you after the race. Don't count him out. Circuit winners, as you can see on the bottom right there. But this has been Mark's playground for the last almost a decade now, and he did it before that in Indianapolis. There you see air temperature 33, track temperature 43. That's 109 in old money. So it's hot out there, and it's just a slight breeze, no real effect from a breeze down that back straight, which is often the case, but it won't be today. We look forward to perfect conditions and hopefully a good race. We've had two interesting races so far. There is confirmation. Juan Mir in third, 67 points behind. Zarco, 93 points behind. It really is starting to look like a two-way race for the championship, no surprise. There are four races to go, including here at the Circuit of the Americas. They head back to Misano, and it then goes to finish the season, Aragon, and of course, Valencia. Wonderful to see so many packing. Stand 15, we welcome you as that triple apex, that famous triple apex through 16, 17, and 18. First Italian rider to confirm that to take three consecutive poles since. Valentino Rossi in 2009. And as, of, as though you needed telling, this is the swan song for the great Valentino Rossi. The biggest star in motorcycle racing history ever. A once-in-a-lifetime combination of talent and charisma. Adored by the fans all over the world. Rossi doesn't race because he needs to. He races because he wants to. And this is his last hurrah at the Circuit of the Americas. Cheer him on. I'm joined in the booth once again by Kevin Schwantz, who's been out on the grid. What's the atmosphere out there, Kevin? Man, it is, it is s s thick. You could cut it. There's so much tension out there. Everybody wants to be at the front of this thing from the drop of the rag. And man, tough call. Here we everybody, go then. Everybody, nobody has smiles on their face. That's for sure. Okay. So we're about to get underway. Hang on the lights. Away we go. Good start from both Marquez and uh, the pole man Banyaya, but it's Marquez who flies into the lead and the 93 does it again at Cota, takes the whole shot and leads the field into the first lap. Nice clean start. Well, we've often said it's starting third position. You can get that start and get up the inside and make it impossible for those chasing to get into the lead. And he's done this now. on the Suzuki and Mir, fourth and six from the third row. Great start for the Suzuki. Yeah, brilliant start from the Suzuki. All good. And into second place he goes. Just what we needed. 20 laps. And Mark Marquez, what do you think? Can he can he can he hold on for the full? You know, I, I think it looks like to me Mark's riding much less physical than he used to. He used to just wrestle the thing around, even when it wasn't working good. But I think he's he's riding smooth, more smooth now. I think he's he's less aggressive, and I think that's maybe his injury a little bit. But it I don't. It looks to me the smoothness is translating into in, into really fast right now. Yep, no question about it. We're keeping an eye on Jack Miller, of course. Jack Miller in ninth position, and he certainly showed in qualifying what he was capable of. He just didn't put it all together at the right time, and so now he's going to have to work his way through the pack. And he needs to do it quickly because Mark Marquez, once in the lead, doesn't tend to hang about. Guattararo, Rins, Banyaya now fourth place. Not a good start by Francesco. Nakagami kind of held his own on that start, just in sixth position there, but nobody's getting away too quick. Marquez looked like he had a little gap early on, but it's closed back up. Yeah, it has very quickly, isn't it? Yeah. So we're about to complete the first lap and see what the lap times are, but the field's starting to spread out now here. But it's Mark Marquez as normal service resumed at the Circuit of the Americas with Mark Marquez leading the way from the championship leader, Quateraro. Rossi down in 21st place in his last run here at Cota. Got a podium last time out two years ago. Brad Bender up three spots. Johan Zarco down four on that first lap. Not a great lap for Zarco and Bender just the opposite. What a start. Good start from Alex Marquez too, up to 12th place. Keeping an eye on Miller, as we said, he got up one place and is now running currently in ninth position. 
long way to go. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, or I know Hopper's been sending us the, uh, the the tire specs, but the whole front row on exactly the same tire. So that actually is makes life a little bit easier when you're studying it in terms of there's not that much of a variance of tire choice this weekend. Into 11. Got to get the bikes straightened up, get that power down, maybe get a slipstream, but they're not close enough at the moment. Nakagami jinking out now. There's Miller. Miller got. Yeah, Miller's starting to make his move. Into 12. Whoa, no! First crash at 12. It was there. Uh, mm. After what has been a brilliant weekend for Taka Nakagami, he has taken a spill at 12, a classic fall here at uh, Circuit of the Americas. So many have fallen under the breaking point there, and sadly, he has gone down. Fairly late, just probably on the brakes a little bit late, tipping in just a touch too far, and the front loses contact, and down you go. Yellow flag at Sector 3, where Nakagami has gone down. But Marquez trying to get away. Let's take a look at the lap times now. He's at 205.8 on his first lap. We'll get a better indication now. Mark Marquez comes across the line now and does a 204.9. Same time, almost identical by Quadraro. Rins, Martin, Banyaya, and then Mir, Binder, Miller now eighth position. Zarco ninth. Espargaro Paul in tenth. Probably Paul, the one that the one to talk about right now. Five two oh five flat. So just less than a tenth off what the leader's doing on the other factory home. Yeah, no, incredible. Do Doby down in 16th position, not showing. We're also looking for Luca Marini. He's down there in 14th position. Oliveira in 13th. And Alex Marquez doing a good job. Nakagami up and running again on the 30 after that spill. Here's what happened. Looking back from Banyaya. Yeah, I think he just got a little bit uh, mesmerized by getting how close he got to the back of that tire and just <laughs> let it go. <laughs> Good start from Mark Marquez. This is going to give him a lot of confidence. He said that the anti-clockwise circuits just help him a little bit with the injury. And uh, Kevin, you know, uh, you, you know, there's certain places where you're more confident when you're carrying an injury, and you can you can verbalize it any way you like. But if you convince yourself that you go better at a track that is not as harmful on your injury, then maybe just maybe it plays a little psychology. You know, whatever Mark Mark, Mark Marquez thinks, because he's obviously been in uh, the right frame of mind in the past seven seasons so whatever's going to get him back to where he needs to be to race at the front consistently right hand right hand tracks left hand tracks whatever it is that he wants um, and whatever he is convinces himself that that's the best jack miller's made his, made himself up to sixth position he was kind of stagnant the first couple of laps but he's really been finding some spots here lately two spots up yeah he's up to six now yeah. so we said watch out for the miller run and it's coming unlike his teammate bagnaya who's worked his way back to fifth jorge martin got by him just last lap great start to this we expected miller to be a factor and even in the press conference uh they wouldn't count him out as well they shouldn't he just got unlucky did miller sixth place then miller does a 2046 and that's a great lap time 2051 by marquez at the front so miller on great form Renz and jorge martin going at it yep nice stuff <laughs> good stuff so a nice start to this one marquez out front the fans happy with that but a 2046 confirmed there best lap race pace 2035 by mark marquez that was a long time ago though back in 2014 Track has changed dramatically in that time. A lot of concerns about the conditions in terms of whether it would rain or what it would do. Uh, dealing with the bumps, obviously, but uh, everybody dialing in. And like I said, you can see the tire choice there. Uh, everybody pretty much on that hard and soft front so hard rear soft front and i think that's going to be the order of the day as marquez continues to lead nothing between them at the moment quateraro quite comfortable to chase him home like i said quateraro just worried where, where banyaya is he's currently fit as quickly as miller got to the back of, of banyaya i wonder if there's any kind of team orders that 
until a certain distance oh, in the yeah. race that you shouldn't pass your teammate. But I mean, right now, if Miller's faster, he could be helping I, yes, Peck say, get closer to the front. It's too early for that, surely. Ducati want him to win, and he can. So I don't think holding him back, I know it's going to help Banyaya, but uh, he might be able to get in front of Banyaya and, and take him with him. Hats off to Cameron Bobier, last time out in the Moto2. Really good race to see an American up there doing so strong. Here comes Quattararo thinking about it. Not really an overtaking spot, 19. 20 can be. Martin in front of Rins. They cross the line again. Let's take a look at the times. 2.053 from the leader. 2.049 by Banyaya. Fastest man out there this time. <laughs> Lando Bloom, an interested bystander. Watching every move. It's great to see people from all different walks of life interested in MotoGP racing. Dovi moving up a little bit. He's up to 15. Ahead of Morbidelli. Zarco's out. Crashed out. Let's see where he's crashed out. Well, he's okay. But a bit of damage, as you can see, to the fairy. That's a shame. Still really close at the front. You know, nobody's made a big break. You know, the front seven, what is that? Pretty yeah. close still? Yeah. Oh, less than a, what, just a second between that top. What's that? 1.5 seconds between the top six. Really nothing at all. Marcus, I think, would prefer to lead right now. If, you, if you're struggling, you don't want to be in a dogfight. You just want to be in the zone, trying to set your, your lap times, and, and that's exactly what he's doing. But if it gets uh, a little tighter, well, he'll, he'll want to break. What will tell you tell me, Kevin, what will he want to do? Will he want to break him if he can? You know, I think you try for the first six or eight or ten laps and see if you can, and if not, hopefully settle down with just a battle against one or two bikes. But, yeah, I mean, if you, you back up to second, you're backing up to seventh, basically. So uh, I think Marquez is doing what what's best for him right now that's trying to stay out front, stay clean track, and and just execute hope hope that the guys behind him get a little bit racy and, and slow each other down and what have you observed from honda they just haven't been as monumentally brilliant um obviously they've always gone well here i think they've won 15 of the last 16 races in the usa so what is it about this year's honda that isn't quite there you know i, I think what's different about this year's honda is there's not quite a healthy marquez on it is that you know, literally I, it i think we get back to we get back to mark being Mark being Mark, and like he said the other day in the press conference, I got to be 100%. My bike's got to be 100%. But then I've got to find that extra something special on top of that. Yeah. Paul Spargaro moving up ninth now. Bastianini into 10th place. Alex Mark is following him in 11th. Martin with the look up the inside there on on uh, Quattararo, but he couldn't quite make it on the brakes into one. Yeah, Quattararo has been concentrating on Marquez, but now he's got to kind of think about what's going on behind him because it's getting close. Miller. Right there with Banyaya, and as you say, are we looking at Miller's in front? Uh, Miller's in, front of, in front of him. He's got yeah. in front of him. Okay, yeah, he just got by him. So no team orders there, or at least not officially. <laughs> so that's good for Miller at this stage in the race. 15 laps to go, plenty of time. Last lap, I just talked about no gap. Now there seems to be a gap opening up at the front. Marquez just over a half second clear of everybody right now. Yeah, just taking a little bit out. You can see him pushing on as he leans out a bit more than usual at 11. And he'll try to put his head down. Yeah, he's got, you can see from above, he's definitely got them in that last lap. So it was half a second. We'll see what it is at the end of this lap as they come down past the RVs again. And the battle is on for second and third here. MotoGP at Kota. Leg out and into 12. Yeah, I was reading that. Uh, yeah. Rins just got passed by Miller, too. Yep. Mm. Yeah, Banyaya is going backwards a little bit. Now, what's happened to Zarco? Out of here. Here's another look at turn one, the famous turn one, and on board, you get to see just how steep it is and how blind that crest is before you get to the top. And that's what can happen very quickly. And that's exactly what did happen. The way it went down, looks like he got in. He realized he was a little bit hot, maybe tried to cover the rear brake, just locked it up a little bit, and then snapped back and dropped him off. So Marquez has increased that gap now to just under a second, 0.956.
to be exact. And that's perfect. That's good work from Mark Marquez from the start of this race. But you what? 1.5 seconds before you're not comfortable, but you're sort of saying, right, okay, I've, I've taken enough of a bag out. I can keep it at this. That's good. Yeah, you ride, ride the first few laps. See, re, watch your pit board. See what's happening behind you. Nobody's getting too close. Nobody showed you a wheel yet. Maybe drop the hammer for a few laps and see what happens. Well, he's certainly he, capable of that. He needs to be, go ahead and drop the hammer because I think Jack Miller's coming. Yeah, I think, I think that's a... <laughs> That's uh, an understatement. Jack Miller in fourth now, and last lap of 204.9 and 204.6 by the leader. So he's taking time off both Quadraro and Martin, but Miller very close indeed in fourth place. There he is, and he's just weaving his way through. Is the thriller. And Bagnaia down to sixth place. That's uh, out of sorts a little bit for him. Bender coming behind him. He's gotten past Mir. And Juan Mir going backwards too. Paul Espargaro, I had big hopes for him at the beginning of the weekend, but he's had, I think, too many falls to uh, to really get his head straight for this race in terms of confidence anyway. He's still there. In ninth position, just ahead of Bastianini. Rossi up to 18th position. Here's a look at Jack. Jack be nimble. And he was. That, nice crash, that crash he had this morning in warm-up was so strange. I mean, it didn't yeah. even look like he was really pushing getting off into turn one. And next thing you know, he was on his on, on his, his left side anyway, not yeah. on his back necessarily. Yeah, and uh, as Chibati and Tardozzi watch on, the two heads of Ducati, yeah, he just couldn't fathom it either. I saw a shot of him in the pit box explaining it, and he really couldn't explain it. It was just an odd crash. <sighs> Most riders know why. They go down, but he didn't really have an answer for that one, but he's going good now on the 43. Now, he has gone for the hard-hard. What difference would that make versus a hard soft? Just personal preference, or would he have more at the end? You know, you should have a little more left at the end. The problem is, did you give too much away with the initial grip to not be able to make it up? Well, he's not really giving too much up. Doesn't, doesn't look like he's given up you know, too much as far as initial grip goes, and who knows, maybe the last five laps, those softs start to go away quite a bit. Now it's showing as a graphic saying he's a bit about almost a second slower than his 214 pace, but the track was very different then, I think. Um, so I'm not surprised to see that. He certainly showed in qualifying, or all of the front rows showed in qualifying, that they are on good pace. Marquez, Quattararo, Martin, Miller, and Rins. That's your top five at the moment. Banyaya slipping down at six. Binder going forward. Mia going backwards down to eighth. Espargaro still there in the hunt in ninth position. And who's next? Bastanini into the top ten after not, not, not a very good qualifying effort, but great to see him making progress today, too. Seem to recognize that number. <laughs> you didn't know? The famous 34, of course, of Kevin's being uh, given a doff in the cap by uh, Juan Mir by putting the his number 36 in a similar font this year. Nice touch for two Suzuki greats. And there you see the gap progression. Doing a good job so far. You tell me, when you have an injury, does the adrenaline carry you through, or do you tire like you would normally, but it's worse because you've got the injury? No, the adrenaline definitely gets you through the start and probably the first half of the race, and then you just got to dig deep and tolerate the pain. Um, you know, the initial initial impact of being in the lead or being in the fight for the lead uh, is enough to, to let you forget about it. But 20 laps and, and 20 turns is a lot of effort around here. And, Anything that's not 100% is definitely going to be beat up by the end of the race. And with heavy braking like there is into 12 and, and a few other places here, the shoulder really does take a beating. So much direction change, you know, and, and at high speed, which is even that much more physical. Yeah. He looks comfortable. He doesn't look as though he's in discomfort at the moment. He looks like his old self a little bit, but not quite as dramatic off the bike. Here's the start again, Kevin. Yeah, that was that was nice by Marquez. He just.
covered his line, came across, knew he got a good start, and then started to cover it. We'll Rins see it from him. Rins and Mirror off the exit of one just about um, did to each other what Marquez and Martin did in Silverstone. He really did get a yeah. good start. Yeah. Maybe even, maybe they did touch just a little bit. <laughs> oh, Robin's race. Sahara-san in the Suzuki garage, probably some anxious moments there. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Fantastic super slow-mos here, thanks to Dorna. But one thing that isn't slow out there is Mark Marquez at the moment. 1.7 seconds he's taken that lead to. That's impressive in the amount of laps he's done it in, just eight laps, given the form of those chasing him. Jorge Martin on great form at the moment, so too, obviously, Quattararo. And I just think that Quattararo would be happy, and no one's happy with second, but today, until Miller gets to him, oh, no. Uh, is that Leash? It is. Yep, Alicia Spargaro crashes out, and he's telling the marshals, give me the bike back, I might try and get back on it. But it's not been a good weekend. Turn 13, not lucky for Alicia Spargaro. That time around, three guys in the 204s. Bagnaya, Quattararo, and Marquez. Everybody else is in the 205. So maybe Bagnaya's, maybe he's on the hard hard as well, and maybe it's just starting to come to him. Great shot from above, and seeing them spread out through the S's. You kind of get it from above what they're dealing with here in terms of those turns. It's not as easy to see when you're looking at them. Much easier to see from above how the corners run. Bagnaya right up on the back of Rins, looking for a way past. Yeah, and Rins got out of shape for a moment on the top of 10, and that might just give Bagnaya a chance up the inside. He can't quite do it this time. He might just tuck himself in and make a move at 12. He does turn it tight. Now he'll tuck himself in and try and get the slipstream. Here we go. We're on board with him, and he does just that. Look at that. Nicely done. It doesn't seem to be a huge difference in top speed. No. You know, yeah, he did go by the Suzuki, but he had used the draft to do it. In the past, the Ducati's Oof. just been m way faster than the other bikes. That was a moment under braking. 42 having to let off a little bit there. His rins almost goes into the back of Miller. Mir and Bender having a little scrap. Yeah, this race settling down now into what will be a real battle towards the end, I think. Uh, we haven't seen anybody pull the plug yet, but uh, there's no question that Marquez is controlling the race. He's now taking that gap to 2.3 seconds at the front, and this is uh, one of the best displays of 2021 I've seen of Marquez. I know he's won races, but uh, all weekend he's looked strong at a track he knows he loves, and still nursing that injury, as we've spoken about, which all the way goes back to 2020. It's a long injury. Marquez, that last lap, the only one in the 204s, and well into the 204s, the 204.6, which makes him have a 2.8 second lead. So he seems to be in control right now, that's for sure. Yeah, 10 laps to go. It's, uh, I mean, once you get to this point uh, and you've got the lead, you are looking seriously towards that checkered flag and uh, not letting anybody get past you. Oliveira up to 11th position. Doby now 12. Valentino Rossi up to 16th, possibly scoring some points here yeah. for his last race at Coda. That'd be super special. Yes, it would. Uh, just out of sight of the points and up to 16. So going strong is the doctor. And uh, I know a lot of fans have come to see him here at Coda, and well, they might. I saw you had a few moments with him. Uh, you, you gave him a helmet. I, I did. I had a helmet painted up for him. Uh, he used to race pocket bikes, and when he did, he used to wear a Schwantz replica helmet. So I had one done up similar to what the helmet design I saw him nice. race with in 90 in 89 and 92 so oh it was, that was a uh, thrill. It was really he loves cool. his helmets he no he his does helmets. yeah so the Marquez fans are getting what they came for which is to see the maestro of Coda do his bit maestro Mark in full glory here on the 93 Honda as it's been for so long here at Circuit of the Americas, he got his first win in MotoGP and took the record as the youngest winner here so many years ago, beating Freddie Spencer here this weekend as the youngest ever winner at the top level. Lean angle. 
57 Sometimes degrees. I think those might be altered numbers. They can't be leaning over 57 <laughs> degrees. But actually, they probably are. Now let's take a look at Miller's time as he comes across the line. Marquez does a 204.5. 205.1 by Quateraro. 205.4 from Miller. He hasn't gained anything there. In fact, Banyaya behind him slightly quicker that last lap. But this is good racing by Mark Marquez. He's gapped it now to 3.4 seconds, and that is a comfortable lead in MotoGP. Rossi into point scoring position in 15. Go, Valet. Good to see. Well, it would be a fairy tale if Mark could win again here. He really has owned America for the last decade, both Indianapolis and here, of course. Certainly looks comfortable. Last lap, 204.5. Quicker than those ahead of him by half a second in some cases. And in the case of Martin, even more so. Almost a second. Down that back straight. It's a lonely run for Mark Marquez, but he'll take it. This is really, really impressive. Didn't expect this, Kevin. I thought it'd be a lot closer. I really did. I thought uh, I thought Pecco and I thought Quattro would keep him honest, and I thought maybe Marquez had the race pace over distance. But you know, it, until you see it happen, and his you know physical conditions always being in question, always been in question since his injury. So it's great to see uh, Mark out front doing what we're so used to seeing him do. Yeah, and if he gets back to full fitness, he tested the 22 bike uh, last week, said it was good, felt like it was going in the right direction, that bodes well for the future. There'll be some new riders around, of course, and of course, many of the regulars will be back. It's such a young group of fast riders now that we really have. It used to be the four or five aliens, now we've got about 10. Petco has made ground back up on Miller. Once Miller got by him, Miller gapped him quite a bit, but they're back nose to tail right yeah, now. Yeah, they are. Take a look at their times again as they exit. Good lap from Miller, 2.056. But Martin just a little bit quicker. Banyaya, 2.050. Uh, so, yeah, definitely quicker than Miller last time out. And the only man still in the 2.04 as well, Quateraro is as well. But uh, Marquez really taking it to the 3.6 seconds now. Almost like you have to be patient going through mm. those S's. Oh, look over the shoulder there. There might have been a call from the radio saying, your teammate is ex exceptionally close. Why don't you move? <laughs> <laughs> Dovey and Alex Marquez. Mm -hmm. Turn seven, turn eight. Now, let's we'll see what happens down this back straight. We'll see if we get a look over the shoulder again. We did a moment ago. Now, will Fabio go for the win, I wonder? I mean, there's nothing stopping him, obviously, but uh, he's got a lot of work to do three seconds behind. I think in my book, he'd stay where he is, if he can. <laughs> the question now is, is can Bagnaia catch Martin? Yeah. Being as though the power plant inside of Martin's bike is a Ducati, he may get a little flash on his dash as well, because then it would only be points lost. There you go, look. One position. There you go. You saw Miller. That was the moment. And through goes the 60, 63 of Franco Bagnaia. Miller just gave the nod effectively, looked over his shoulder, and away he went. So that was definitely a, a little bit of a word, I think, or at least an obvious uh, let you by as Gigi watches on. That's a good purple patch for the Ducati team. They've always gone well here at Cota, but this is... Uh, as good as they've looked for a long time. But once again, Honda, could they get 16 out of 17 wins here? Uh, excuse me, 16 out of 17 wins here in America, I may add. There's the gap in the live championship. Quateraro would move it to 55 points, and that's healthy. 
when you get over 50 kevin you know that's uh that's two wins and that uh that's that's comfortable just four rounds left yeah well so. yeah three yeah exactly three after this and uh that really does uh give him just well a little bit more comfortability going into those next rounds that he can lose some points and still win but this is a masterful display from this young man mark marquez who's made this track his own and it looks at the moment with seven to go he's doing it again marquez quattro and jorge martin all within a tenth of a second that last lap right at the 205 flat mark 204.9 for marquez and quattro and a 205 flat for jorge martin so let's see what Banyaya can do now. Uh, he's uh, got and dispensed with Miller. He wasn't as quick as Martin last time. Miller will follow him home by the looks of things, having started 10. There you go. That was the, enough of the sign, was it? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the moment literally literally waved him through do you do that on purpose let everybody know what you're doing <laughs> if you have to be put in that situation just, just to make you feel a little bit better yeah. about it yeah <laughs> yeah i had to wave him by <laughs> yeah I had to wave him by. you saw me wave him by <laughs> 1.6 plus 1.6 okay that's what he's telling him six laps to go now this is a very spread out race not what we expected to be fair but mark marquez killing it 3.8 seconds over quaternado the championship leader banyaya trying to chase it down can he stop martin before the end of this race and give banyaya an important podium the gap 55 points at the moment on our live timing in terms of the championship that could change Right now, the Maestro Mark doing the business here in the Horsepower Rodeo. A little bit unsettled over the crest of 9 through 10, but it looked, looked, looked pretty stable, yeah, actually. Yeah, I'd say no more than anybody else, to mm. be fair. And as you'd expect with Mark, he's taking the faster line, which may be the harder line in terms of dealing with the track. Rins the up the inside of Miller. Ooh, Whoa! No, Miller comes straight back at Straight him. back underneath him. Yeah. Drag race down the back straight. Away. <laughs> Miller's Here we go. just shaking his head going, what did you do that for? Now, he might have a chance under braking now. Mm, I think the Ducati uh, has a little bit too much steam down the straightaway. He struggled yeah. to get close enough to get by here, but... Fascinating stuff at 140 miles, 50 miles an hour at times, and 200 miles an hour down that back straight. Uh, up the inside into 15. Watch this. Yep. yep. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Calling it right. Kevin Schwantz know what's, knows what to do on a Suzuki, that's for sure. And called it perfectly. Turn 15. And through he goes again. Miller will try again as we get down to five laps to go in a moment. You have, to, you have to exercise the strengths of your motorcycle, and Suzuki's always been good at turning right through the center of the corner. Uh, nimble. So great yeah. job by Alex Renz. Not always the most powerful motorcycle out there, but always been a beautiful compact package, as you say. Nimble is the best description I think I can come up with. Four seconds now, Marquez leads. This is a great display of racing. Masterful display, you may say, as we look at slow-mo from 16 17 and 18 what do you see when you watch this maestro you know elbow just off the deck knee just off the deck amazing ama an amazing rider mark is especially if we all still think he may not be 100 <laughs> percent you know when he when he came back and won at saxon ring at probably one of the second most physical track compared to here i really thought we were going to see marquez start a dominance again but you know, Petco has kept him honest, and Fabio has kept him honest on weekends as well. So it's great to see Mark uh, back to form. And to be fair, um, I mean, anybody, any ordinary um, athlete with three wins in a world championship would probably be pretty happy. Uh, but not Mark. Um, but that's the dominance that's expected from him. And there you see his lap times. Pretty darn consistent. To be this late into the race and still doing 204s, both he and Quattro are doing an amazing really job. Good. Yeah. 
That's how consistent. I mean, anybody who's done a track day knows how hard it is to do just that. Fastest lap on lap seven, 2043, but he's still just three tenths off that fastest time circulating here. And that is pretty darn impressive. And he's increasing the lead with every lap. Quattararo happy, I think, to sit in second place and knowing that Fangaya still grappling with Jorge Marti at the moment. And there he is. Interesting story, Quattararo. He really has bounced on. He's still a youngster. We forget how young he is. But a big career ahead of him. Pramac team watching on. Ooh. Gaps down to 1.3 to Martin. And Begnaia was a half second quicker that lap. So Certainly time, isn't it? So that's really the big story. There you see the gap, 1.3 seconds. This is the first sector. Watch the flashing white line, which will tell you when they come to the end of the first sector, and that will give us another update before they head to the second sector. Oh, what happened then? A bit of a mistake by Martin. I think going through the second part of the S's and well, that's immediately changed just, everything. He's Look just at that. given up seven tenths of a second in, in two or three corners. I'm looking at graphics. I don't need to. <laughs> The gap's visual. Down to point six. The race is on, Kevin. How do you play this from uh, Banyaya's point, uh, point of view? Where would you think about making the overtake? Right now, straight down the back straight? You know, he's going to be a bit flustered from making a mistake. Sure. I try and get by him as quick as I can before he has a chance to regroup. Good point. You know, another another note, Bastianini just passed Bender, so he's continuing his climb from, from quite a dismal starting position up into the top ten. And Rossi in the points in 15th. Not going to do it into 12 this time, but he's right there. Maybe a run into 15, like we saw before. With the Suzuki. He's certainly close enough. Got back early there. Could possibly, but I, th no. I don't think the Ducati quite do that through 15 like the Suzuki does. Maybe at the apex of one, or getting a good drive out of 20. Let's see what they do as they come through 18. And it's nice to see 19 from above as well. You can see the distance for yourself. And you can see if Miller is closing. And it's pretty much normal stations. They keep the gap between them constant. Here's turn 20. As small as Martin is, I don't know that he's going to have the legs. I mean, those Ducatis all seem to be about the same speed. So gap just gets a bit bigger in a straight line. God, what is incredible. It's gone from 1.3 in a matter of a lap down to just, well, nothing, point two. Time running out, three laps to go. Masterful display by Mark Marquez. Tardozzi watching on has his Ducatis. Duel it out here at Cota. On the brakes into 11, maybe? Yeah, good call. Oh, oh he's the position's well, his. He doesn't even have to pass he him now. He's got to have to take a long lap. When will he know that? When will he know that? He, he might probably got it as he crossed the start finish line. Yeah, okay. So uh, it really is. It's a good battle to watch, but it, it's no longer a battle because uh, a long lap penalty has been given to Jorge Martin. It's just come up on our race direction graphics. So. Sadly, the battle over between these two, and it goes the way of Banyaya, and he'll take him anyway into 12. Crowd loving that. Maybe not aware of the fact that he's got to do a long penalty. And through goes Banyaya, and that's important points for him in the championship hunt, no question about that. So it's a good recovery from Francesco. But Mark Marquez, 4.3 seconds now, the lead over Quattararo. Banyaya now up to third. So the championship playing out as we'd expected. The points gap will probably stay pretty constant. Just five points, the difference. Or four points, is it, between second and third, I think? Yeah, four. four. 25, 20, 16. There we go. Confirmation, 52 points it will be if it finishes this way. 
And that's a good day at the office for Quateraro. He's played it well. Didn't need to force it with Marquez. Marquez not an issue in this championship in 2021. All he cares about is Banyaya, and he's got him behind him, and that's all that matters. Martin needs to remember to serve that penalty. If not, they're going to start docking in positions, I think. Yeah, and that's uh, key, too, for those chasing. I suppose you could do it on the last lap. Yeah, there you go. That's tough because it was a mistake, and, you know, it's not like he gained anything, really. Yeah, I mean, he lost three quarters of a second. Yeah. <laughs> go figure. Whoever makes the call on that, you know, maybe I'm, maybe a second guess it just a little bit. Yeah. Fast Freddy's in the booth. We here. So, Mark Marquez, come down the back straight and really putting on a show. And um, fans, if you're enjoying this, get on your feet and cheer him on. He'll probably be out of here by now as he keeps his head down on the 93. Breaks as late as he dares. And that classic style of his, bunny hopping over the asphalt to turn 12. There's Quateraro in second place. And there's this battle for third, which is pretty much over. Banyaya ahead of Jorge Martin, who has to uh, take a long lap, and he's not going to do it this way. He's going to have to do it on the last lap. I hope they've told him. Looks like he still wants that position to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey ho. So, great racing. As a rider in a battle like that, the last thing you do is look at the dash. I mean, you're all out trying to focus your efforts on getting by the guy in front of you. Don't know. Maybe he hasn't seen it. I don't know. Yeah. There looks to be a bit of concern in the Pramac garage. Yeah. Well, here we go. Last lap then. Mark Marquez on that famous 93. They might have a corner after him if he keeps going like this one. He's going into big red right now. We should start naming the corners here, I think. Mark Marquez, smooth as you like. Oh, I say that. <laughs> and he hits a bump. But he's okay. He's looked really good today. And you can see tense moments for Team Marquez. Dad will be there, I'm sure. But this has been an immaculate performance by HRC and Honda. And, of course, Mark Marquez. That's just great to see him back out front and doing what he does best and easing his way now out of 11. And he's taken the gap to over four seconds and he'll probably knock it off just a little bit towards the end. But this is, uh, Kevin, this is pretty immaculate so far. Got over half the back straightaway for a lead. Just a nice, easy cruise home for Marquez. Back wheel still in the air. Nothing's ever, he never slows down any. He just wants to humiliate everybody and beat them as bad as he possibly can. <laughs> he doesn't slow down, does he? So then Mark Marquez has made Coda his home over the years and has made America, he is Captain America, absolutely a dominant force in the last decade. And he's going to do it again in 2021. Somebody going wide. Oh, that's uh, Martin Bagaya. Serban is Martinson a is, um, long lap trying to keep in front of in <laughs> but here we come Mark Marquez will do it again here at Kota and that has been a masterful display by the mighty Mark a magical performance by Mark Marquez who takes the checkered flag here at Kota to win by a country mile Wow brilliant stuff by the 93 doesn't get any better than that. 4.6 seconds ahead of the championship leader. Banyaya takes third place and important points for him. Rins does beat Martin to fourth place. Bastianini, great Mir story. And Bastianini and Mir get Miller on the last lap. Really impressive. Yeah, Miller going down to eighth position. Ninth is Binder. Polis Fargaro takes 10. Oliveira takes 11. 12th is Alex Marquez. Dovi is 13th, Marini is 14th, and the doctor has come calling. He takes 15th place. Good run for the man who started way down. Have, have a look at that too. 205.914, fastest lap of the race for Va Valentino Rossi on the last lap. <laughs> that is impressive.
I think that just to say thanks to Texas. He loves the place. Yes, he does. So, good performance. And while it wasn't the closest of races, a very important spectacle, both for Mark Marquez and his return to form and his fans enjoying every moment of that. And well, they should. And while he won't be in contention, that's a great win for Mark Marquez, his third of the year. All right, well, we are going to go to a quick break, and when we come back, we will break down the MotoGP race here at Circuit of the Americas, and we'll be back after these messages.